Pop OS 19.10 is out and available, and I updated my system to it. Uh, unlike the Windows world, when there's a new release, you kind of do the uh, cringe and break for impact. Or if you own an IT company like me, you go, wow, this is going to generate a lot of uh, people calling us and system problems, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, when it comes to Linux, generally speaking, and so far, 19.10 has been no exception, moving to a new version as there's incremental upgrades has not been a big deal. Not to mean there's no problems at all, but uh, you know, I'm going to give my first impressions here of Pop OS 19.10. So being that it's an Ubuntu derivative and the 19.10 version of Ubuntu came out, all the systems that are based off of Ubuntu 10 are going to have their updates and Pop OS being no exception got theirs out relatively quickly here, only within a couple days of the Ubuntu release. Now, before we dive fully into the content, I want to take a quick second to thank a sponsor of the channel, which is IT Pro TV. And they have an entire course here. You can get started with Linux, the whole CompTIA Linux program. So if you want to do the testing, get certified, or just do some learning through, with some binge-worthy content, IT Pro TV's got you covered. They have a ton of different Linux videos and Microsoft videos and network engineering videos. So they have a wide variety of content. Check them out. And if you're going to check them out, why not get 30% off and use the LTS offer code? So you can try IT Pro TV free for seven days when you sign up with a premium or standard monthly membership. Get 30% off. Use promo code LTS at checkout. Great content. And by the way, this is a channel affiliate that we reached out to to become a channel affiliate because we were already using this is a tool we use over here at Lawrence Systems uh, to do our staff training and uh, keep track of all of our staff and I encourage all of them to do a lot of extra learning I, I just can't make a video about everything but boy they seem to have man they've covered so many different topics and uh, myself I find myself watching some of their content when I want to learn about a new subject as well that you well know, you know like I said I got knowledge gaps myself and uh, IT Pro TV has been a great way to fill some of those. I like videos and I like making videos and so do the folks over at IT Pro TV. Uh, there's also some other affiliates down below you can check out to help out the channel and it's much appreciated. And while you're there, click the like button. Back to the content. So I love System 76's Pop OS. It puts the right amount of polish to me on Ubuntu. Now I did try Ubuntu 1910. I have another system running as I've been playing around with it, but I, I miss right away the polish and enhancements I get with the System 76 uh, sitting on top of it. Now, one of the first things I want to note is they bring the 5.3 kernel there. Why does that matter? Well, the 5.3 kernel, and we'll go ahead and drag my terminal over here. The 5.3 kernel, which is currently 5.3018, this is what uh, Pop OS runs uh, by default. I did not customize any of this and they are noticing substantially and they've got the much more details on the performance enhancements with the Ryzen 9 3900X and that is the chip that I'm specifically running but the whole Ryzen series of processors the 5.3 kernel has been you know very uh focused on and enhancing gaps that were missing. So there, it's not that you didn't get good performance out of it. You get amazing performance even running the Yoda kernel, but there's some of those fine tweaks that get it that much faster, which is pretty exciting. So that's the first thing I noticed. Now, does it feel faster? Sure, but that's a really non-subjective, non-scientific way. But I will tell you that the system seems super snappy and responsive, etc. But it always, it was before, I won't lie. Um, the one problem I'll highlight first is this one, uh, Caden Live, their PPA, uh, their repository that I had added on broke and it doesn't seem to like Ubuntu 19.10 and which means also it doesn't like System76, but you're probably wondering, how did I upload and edit this video? Did I use another tool? Nope, I used an app image. So if I uh, run the app image of Caden Live, which actually gives me one slightly a uh, newer version, it works perfectly fine. Uh, maybe I should do a video on App Image sometime, but App Image is, in short, a way to package an entire application without having a bunch of dependencies. And this is really helpful in terms of things like Caden Live because any of your video editors, they have a lot of dependencies on different libraries for some of the compiling editing, and having it all packaged into an App Image means they get exactly the ones that are going to be the most stable and most compatible with. Caden Live. So that was my workaround for the one thing I found that didn't work, but everything else works perfectly fine inside of System A6 that I've tried. So all my utilities I usually run and all the systems um, so far, no problems at all. They did keep the menus at the top pretty much the same. So the notification menu with the do not disturb button. Um, that is not there 
on the Ubuntu distro. At least, at least I didn't see it. Maybe there's a way to add it, but the native default um, didn't have it installed. As silly as that sounds, that's really nice. Uh, and the integration carried over from my upgrade of having my uh, Google Calendar uh, tied right into here for my business, so all the calendar notifications show up right at the top, just fine. Theme updates. You may notice the dark theme. So let's actually go over here and uh, we'll switch over and look at the appearance. So first we have some previews here of how you can change the wallpapers and didn't feel like changing wallpaper. Matter of fact, I mostly have applications open, so I don't think much about wallpaper, but I can quickly, and I mean fast, if you like the different theme between light and dark, uh, please note it takes no time to switch. This is all in real time here. Uh, I like this. I used to remember back in the day when you would switch some of the themes, there was like a pause and the system would re-render and some of the applications would have errors and et cetera. Uh, so you can go, I like the light theme. I like the dark theme. Whatever you're comfortable with, you can switch. I'm partial to the dark themes and including, they did mention that they updated the terminal uh, to manage and theme, but I like my custom terminal much better. Uh, this is on GitHub. You can find it on my GitHub if you want this custom prompt. The only thing I'll mention, which it'll get updated because I'll push it up to GitHub. When I've launched Tmux, I get a couple errors. Uh, it was, Tmux works fine. I can still split the screens fine, but there is a uh, some tweaking I must have to do. My, my guess would be it's newest version of Tmux and some flags I have tied in there are not compatible. Uh, this is actually why I publish my dot files on GitHub because after I figure out what those are, I'll do a push back up to my GitHub and then a pull on all my other systems that are running this so they all have the latest terminal. All right, back to the other changes. So besides the dark mode and 5.3 kernel, both those things are really good. There is some enhancements um, in the GNOME because it's the latest version of GNOME and how fast it runs. Honorable mention though, I don't use TensorFlow, but this is one of those things that Pop! OS does a good job of and they added some TensorFlow enhancements. Now, these are all things, yes, you can add onto a Linux distribution or add onto Ubuntu. They've baked a lot more of it right in to make it a little bit easier. So if you're doing uh, some work with TensorFlow and need some of the utilities, they make it nice to tie all that in there, which is pretty cool. So this is the GNOME 334, uh, redesigned background panel landed, uh, icons and application overview can be grouped together. This is actually pretty cool. So we'll pull up all the icons here. And let's say, you know, some of them are grouped, some of them aren't. So here's the utilities. So here's all the utilities. And if we wanted something in or out, we can just kind of drag it in or out now. The other thing they have to make this a little bit more enhanced is let's say you want to put two things together. If you do this, it'll group them together into utilities and name it. And if you take and only have one thing in a group and drag it out, it ungroups it. Reminds me a lot of the way the Android interface works as well, how you can just drag things on top of each other. Um, it's kind of nice because then you can start grouping things together. But I honestly, as cool as that is, it's not something I ever use. And the reason why my habit for launching is really never even clicking this. It's novel if I try to remember the name of something, I can't remember the name, but normally I would launch something by this. So I you know hit the super key and uh, just open up the tool that I want opened. That's my habit of doing it. So it's not, it's, to me, it's novel they did it. So it's cool that I can do that. But uh, I think of applications, I know what applications I want to run. So I'm really struggling to decide. So my usual launch is just super key and open them up. Now they did make this just as nice as ever. Nothing's really changed here for adding things and uh, opening up things on a different desktops that still works just absolutely smooth like it always has. And this is one of those enhancements when, you know, Windows says, oh, we're going to do some virtual desktops. It's one of the things that once you get used to using and having all these virtual desktops, uh, I really like the way that works. This is a GNOME feature and uh, it's something that's always worked really well for me and I do like it. The other thing that is in here is the upgrade process itself has changed. Uh, oh, there's a few other errata here, I, just so I see it. There are some more language options. So if your language reads not from left to right, but from uh, right to left, they did add some bi-directional. I will mention that because I know I I only speak English. A lot of people ask me to translate and other things. I don't speak another language. I can't do any better than the um, system translations does. But I do realize over a little over 50%, a lot of my Linux videos and sometimes higher on my network engineering ones are viewed out of country. So I do appreciate that there's a lot of this work going on. Um, and I feel terrible because I don't speak other languages and I'm jealous that other people do. And maybe one day I'll take the time to learn one. That's not today. <laughs> uh, but the upgrade process went really, really smooth because um, it shows up as an upgrade. So in the about screen, you have this little upgrade. It does this whole offline upgrade. And offline upgrades are 
are now live on Pop! OS 19.4, bringing faster, more reliable upgrades. When an upgrade becomes available, it is downloading your computer. Then when you decide to upgrade to the newest OS version, the upgrade will overwrite the current version of your software. However, this is not to be confused with an automatic update. Uh, your OMS will remain on a current version until you decide yourself to upgrade. This was kind of neat because it downloads it and it says ready to reboot, just reboot and it lets you know it's going to do it and away we go. Now I didn't have any problems, but like I always tell people, backup, 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 make sure backups have anything critical on your system. And I will be doing a video about how I maintain backups on systems because I don't do on my desktop or laptop full image backups and people had asked why and I'm like, you don't need to in Linux and I'm going to do a video that breaks that down a little bit further pretty soon. But other than that, my first impressions have been, granted I've only had it for 24 hours, but my first impressions have been, I like it, it works well, I haven't had any issues besides Caden Live, I tested all the applications and did all my usual uh, things that I do from a daily basis, but it's nice, buttery smooth, everything works fine, and uh, yeah, so far no problems at all, but I don't really expect any. As much as I'm excited for new features, I rarely have the whole brace for impact. Um, my, the minor aggravation about Caden Live and then having to run an app image is, is probably an edge case that most people won't have an issue with because not many people are doing video editing and everything else here. But uh, tools like uh, GIMP, they work perfectly fine, which is great. And Caden Live, I, if I use the built-in Caden Live, it would work. Uh, it's only me adding the extra repositories that I add is having a problem. So I will make sure a note of that. And I run that because I want to run the latest version of Caden Live. So it's kind of a me problem because I'm trying to run Bleeding Edge on a on a system versus some people who go, I'm just a casual video editor and I'm fine with running a slightly older version. No problem. You can use the built-in to the pop shop um, and load the version they have in here. And does it say what version it is? 19082. So it's going to be a little bit behind compared to uh, the one that I downloaded from App Image. But, you know, like I said, minor, uh, minor. So 1908B2 versus actually what version do they show? Oh, 1902. So I, other than the B2 after it, they're actually going to be pretty close. So I'll have to look at that. I didn't look at that till right now. So you learned something new with me on the video. All right. And. Thanks for watching. Uh, links down below for the affiliates. It does help out the channel. And carry on. Let's continue the discussion over in the forums. And thank you. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.